It's good to have you back, Spider-Man. It was perfect. Perfect. Everything, down to the last minute details. Hi, I'm Jack, and welcome back, because today I'm going to give you guys my ranking of all 13 movies in the Spider-Man franchise. That includes the Raimi trilogy, the Amazing Spider-Man duology, the Homecoming trilogy, the Spider-Verse duology, and so as both Venom movies and Morbius. So with that said, let me know down below in the comments what's your ranking of all the movies, or just give me your favorites of the bunch. I'd love to know that. And with that said, let's get started. <laughs> In last place is Morbius. This is the only movie on this entire ranking that I wholeheartedly dislike. <laughs> Aside from Matt Smith's performance as Milo, I found this movie to just be a drag. It took an idea of a very low level character of Morbius, give him a movie and it's just generic, it's uninteresting, it's very boring at points where I just couldn't get myself invested into the character of Michael Morbius. He just goes through the motions and it feels like we don't really see much of a character evolution aside from the fact that the character officially has vampire abilities. And adding to that, rather than make a movie about just exploring the transformation of him becoming Morbius, it just feels like a movie that tried to be your 2000s superhero movie where it just goes through the motions and I didn't care about the protagonist. I thought it was poorly paced. The score feels like it was ripped out of the Dark Knight trilogy. <laughs> You serious? And the visuals and the look of the movie is so dark that at times it's hard for me to kind of make out what's going on. And it ended very abruptly to me, which is really strange. And I really did not like either of the end credit scenes with Vulture and how it handles his character following Spider-Man Homecoming. So just as a whole, despite the fact that it was so memed on a lot this last year, this is easily the worst movie to come out of the Sony Spider-Man franchise they have to offer. But at least it gave us this scene. In 12th place is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. This movie does have some merit. There is a great dynamic and chemistry between Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone. Easily one of the best parts about the movie. Their chemistry is just really great. It's all on screen. It's very cute, heartwarming to watch. And adding to that, from a visual effects standpoint, this is the best looking Spider-Man movie of the bunch. There's a good score by Hans Zimmer. The web swinging scenes is very energetic and fluid, which I really like. And I really liked the visual technical side of this movie. But as a whole, this movie has my least favorite story out of any of the Spider-Man movies with Spider-Man on display in the title because it brings back the parents plotline, which wasn't really big on in the last movie, but this movie takes it even further and it feels very out of place, unnecessary. And what made it worse was it contradicts so much about the whole purpose of Spider-Man. And then adding to that, I didn't think any of the villains in this movie were very good. Rhino is just a very cartoonish character. Green Goblin, they rushed his whole development. Just the reasoning for him having this quick descent, especially in the logic of things, didn't really make sense to me. And Jamie Foxx's Electro, the main villain of the movie, I thought was very over the top here. It feels like he came straight out of a schumacher batman movie and so this is a movie that had way too much going on it's the worst paced spider-man movie but because technically it is very good and i really liked andrew garfield and emma stone this movie it's a bummer that this is a movie that easily doesn't hold up as well as the other spider-man movies for me but it does have some merit even though i don't love it in 11th place is venom similar to the amazing spider-man 2 this movie is just very messy. There's really funny and enjoyable moments that makes this an extremely watchable movie. And I do love the chemistry and the dynamic between Eddie and the symbiote. It's by far the best part of this movie. Tom Hardy is very good as Eddie Brock. And the action, the crazy side of this movie when it gets weird, 
I really like all of that. But the first half of the movie just took a while to get into. There's leaps and bounds in logic with the host with the symbiote can only live for a certain time and how some symbiote hosts last longer than others. And that didn't make sense. But then adding to that, they tried to make things too much into a direction where, okay, they want to turn Venom into the main protagonist. And this is the only time in the non-Spider-Man movies where this works. And it's a movie where not the best paced. It takes a bit to get into. And I think whenever the movie's not focusing on Eddie and the symbiote, the movie falters a bit. I thought Riot was a really underwhelming villain considering he's played by the very talented Riz Ahmed. And I think if the movie fo focused more on Eddie and the symbiote having become one as Venom, it probably would be higher up on the list. But this is a very guilty pleasure movie. It's not great. There's some really dumb moments in this movie. But it's also a really entertaining one, nevertheless. In 10th place is Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Venom, Let There Be Carnage, more like Venom, Let There Be Cinema. <laughs> Cheesiness aside, this is a step up from Venom. It's very well paced, very short movie, but it just flew by very quickly. I love Woody Harrelson as Carnage. He is a great villain. He performed the character very well. And I do like the whole story idea of Eddie and the symbiote are not getting along. And so they got split for a majority of this movie. And so is how they bring back Michelle Williams character into the mix and how that ties into things. This movie very much feels like a rom-com between Eddie and the symbiote. And for that reason, I really like it a lot. And similar to how I feel about the last movie, there's some dumb moments here. There's some scenes here that don't really work as well. And I'm not too crazy about where they leave off Carnage by the end of this movie. But visually, it's good. It's really funny to watch. It is really fun. And I like that it embraces some of the more weirder aspects of Venom in this movie. And thankfully, they got rid of the weird wig that Woody Harrelson had to wear at the end of Venom 1 when they made this movie. So this is a fun movie. Is it one of my favorite movies in this franchise? No, but it's watchable. It's hilarious. It is entertaining. And Tom Hardy, once again, is very good as Eddie Brock. So I really like this one. And I'm looking forward to see what they do next with Venom 3. In ninth place is Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3 is a guilty pleasure movie. It's easily the weakest of the Raimi trilogy, but I still have a whole lot of fun with this movie. There is some heart to be had here, even if there was a lot of studio interference in the mix with Sam Raimi not wanting to include Venom, but he had to nevertheless because the studio wanted it to. And this is a fun movie. It definitely does have a lot on its plate with the story with Harry, the story with Peter and the symbiote, the story with MJ, him trying to be Spider-Man, Spider Venom, and there is a lot at play here. And by far my favorite villain in this movie was Thomas Hayden Church as Sandman, who I really liked. They played the sympathetic angle with him that worked really well for me. And I really liked what Christopher Young did with the score of this movie, taking over from Danny Elfman. And I thought that while a lot of this movie has some really dumb and hilarious moments here, I can't help but just vibe with it to where, even though it's a very messy movie with a lot of flaws at hand, I still enjoyed this a lot. For being the final chapter in the Raimi trilogy, it was still a satisfying entry for me. I love the third act. I love a lot of the scenes here. And the way it wraps up everything I thought was really nice, even if the movie itself isn't as good as Spider-Man 1 or 2, which you will see higher up on the list. But for what this is, I like this movie. Is it amazing? No. But it's definitely a fun movie where flaws and all, it still has some heart, still has some of the Raimi charm at hand. And I really enjoyed in the end, and I did think that for the third movie in the trilogy, it did a good job of wrapping things up. In eighth place is Spider-Man Far From Home. This is a fun, good, entertaining movie changing things up. We now see Spider-Man in Europe on a vacation set after the events of Avengers Endgame. Seeing Peter wanting to take a break from being Spider-Man and just want to be himself. I like that idea here. And I think Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio, one of my favorite Spider-Man movie villains. I love the score by Michael Giacchino in this movie. 
And it's very well paced. The action is very good in this movie, especially the Mysterio illusion sequences. And even in the third act, which shows Spider-Man's evolution throughout this movie of him becoming a hero. But I do think the plot of this movie is easily the weakest of the Homecoming trilogy. The scene with Peter and the woman of him changing his clothes, did not think that was necessary. The whole love triangle with Peter, MJ, and Brad was not invested in that side of the movie. And I do think for Far From Home, it does have moments where it looks kind of cheesy, not entirely needed, but it does shine a lot when it's about Mysterio and Spider-Man coming into conflict with that character. So fun movie. I, I did have a lot of a good time with it. There's some heart some really funny moments here, even if it's not as funny as Homecoming or No Way Home is. But for what it is, I still really enjoy Far From Home just being the second installment in this trilogy. So it's a flawed movie, but I still have a good time with this one. In seventh place is The Amazing Spider-Man. The first movie in the post Raimi trilogy era was definitely one that I don't think a lot of people were ready for at the time, but as it stands now that it has been almost 11 years since this movie was released, I really like The Amazing Spider-Man. I like that they tried to take the familiar reigns of Spider-Man, what we know of his origin, takes it in a bit of a different direction here. It's a lot more mature you got some more teen angst elements in here with how andrew garfield plays the character and i love it i love andrew garfield so much as this character and once again i think he and emma stone have the best chemistry out of all three spider-man couples in these three live action movies and i think visually it is great it holds up very well i love the score by james horner in fact more than even the Hans zimmer score in the next movie and I love that this is a story of Peter who is trying to discover what happened to his parents, why they abandoned him, and he ends up becoming Spider-Man. Now, there are things about what they do with him later when it comes to the spider that I wasn't really a fan of. But for this movie alone, I do like that. It takes a lot of the more familiar things we know about Spider-Man, even in Spider-Man 1, and try to do something with it in a different light. And I like that a lot. There's some good action when there's there, even though it's not as frequent. I thought Lizard was a decent antagonist, easily the best one to come out of the Amazing Spider-Man movies. And it's one that does give me a lot of nostalgia considering I watched this one a lot. But in general, I do think it took a while for him to become Spider-Man. And I wish there was a little bit more in terms of the more Spider-Man side of things to see him as the character. Because again, it takes a while to get there. And I was never really a big fan, fan of the whole parents plot line thing these movies brought either. I didn't really add anything to the character that we didn't already have. So... For what this movie is, I do really like The Amazing Spider-Man. It's a movie that I appreciate more as time goes on. And for Andrew Garfield's run, this is easily the best of the two movies he did. In sixth place is Spider-Man Homecoming. This is the first Spider-Man movie in the MCU after his debut in Captain America Civil War. And this is an amazing debut for this character in the MCU. It very much reminds me of aspects of the Stan Lee Steve Ditko run back in the 60s. And I love Tom Holland as his character. He has this lively charm to him and this youthfulness that I really like in this movie, considering this is the Spider-Man movie where we see him in high school the most. And I love that this movie plays the high school elements with the Spider-Man side of things. And I've always thought some of the criticism for this movie is a little unfair. There's a lot of merit in Homecoming. It's very well paced. It's probably the most humorous out of the Homecoming trilogy. It's the best directed movie from John Watts. And Michael Keaton as Vulture is amazing. Not only is he one of the best Spider-Man villains in the movies, but he's one of the best Marvel villains in comic book movies. And I absolutely love just the story of P Peter Parker, who wants to do more, but he has to learn. He needs to just stay on the ground, be a normal high schooler while also doing the more street level stuff. And I love that Peter faces consequences where every time he goes out being Spider-Man, it's a win for Spidey, but it's a loss for Peter. And it's not as visually noticeable at first, but if you look deeper into it, you see it. And I love that a lot. I love the third act of this movie. I like the score by Michael Giacchino. And while it does feel like a movie that has some of those MCU charms to it, where it feels like you can tell this is in the MCU, I love 
Homecoming. It's a movie I've always loved since day one, and it is still an amazing Spider-Man movie. And this is one that I just love as time goes on, especially as I do right now. In fifth place is the one that started it all, Spider-Man. This movie is so heartfelt, it's charming, it's like a comic book came to life, and I love that Sam Raimi just kicked things off with a really strong opening that's really well paced all the way till the end of this movie, but it never lets up. Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin is incredible, he's one of the best villains to ever come out of a comic book movie. And then adding to that, the score by Danny Elfman is one of the best comic book movie scores ever made. And a story like this, I thought, is beautiful. Just Peter gets bitten. Peter gets bitten by a spider. His life goes upside down. He comes into conflict with Green Goblin, all while having feelings for Mary Jane Watson. And it's a great coming-of-age story with heartfelt charm, humorous moments, the Sam Raimi tricks that I really like out of Raimi as a director. And it's an absolute joy to watch. It is a lot of the things I love about Spider-Man as a character. It's a very iconic and influential movie for the comic book genre, rightfully so. And from beginning to end, I just adore what this movie does for the character. Considering this is the first theatrically released live action Spider-Man movie, it kicks things off with a bang. In fourth place is Spider-Man No Way Home. From a directing standpoint, this is the weakest of the John Watts movies because COVID happened and they had to do a lot of things in a really harsh environment because of COVID. But for what the crew was able to pull off of this movie, it is still an achievement considering that this movie manages to use the three generations of Spider-Man, use the nostalgia without ever overshadowing the story of Tom Holland Spider-Man's identity being exposed. I love it. Not only is this one of the best uses of fan service I've seen in a movie, but this is a great Tom Holland Spider-Man story where the story was always about him the whole way through. It never loses that. Bringing back the other villains was really cool. Seeing Willem Dafoe, Alfred Molina, Jamie Foxx, Reese Ifans, and Thomas Hayden Church reprise their roles from the other movies I absolutely love. And the way it handles bringing back Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, I was also a really big fan of doing things that I never thought was possible for a Spider-Man movie at this time. I thought this was a fever dream of a movie and they pulled it off. Even the way they utilized Doctor Strange here, I really like the score by Michael Giacchino, the best out of the MCU Spider-Man trilogy. And it wraps things up for him so well where it takes things back to what we tend to know from Spider-Man. And this is a great movie that utilizes fan service very well while also at heart still being a story about Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And it is intense. There's some great, amazing scenes. And I just felt like a kid watching this movie. And in a way, it does feel like a movie that works far better in theaters than at home. It does feel like the event kind of movie. But absolutely love this movie. Where no matter the flaws or how this movie is going to age in a couple years, I absolutely love what Spider-Man No Way Home was able to accomplish. So not only is it one of my favorite Spider-Man movies, it's one of my favorite movies of the last couple of years. And what it was able to accomplish was something that I never imagined, and they absolutely pulled it off. In third place is the new guy on the block, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Considering how incredible Into the Spider-Verse was, this movie had a really hard task to live up to. Is it going to be as good as the previous movie? Is it going to be a slam dunk of an animated movie that pushes the boundaries of animation further? Yes, this movie absolutely understood the assignment. It is amazing, very well paced. I love the opening and so as the hard cliffhanger this movie ends on, leaving me extremely excited for Beyond the Spider-Verse and the way it continues the stories of Miles and Gwen, very big fan of, especially that takes place a year later. It really recontextualizes so many things from Into the Spider-Verse where if you were to ever revisit that movie, things hit so differently now. Because of it, I love the new villain of The Spot, voiced very well by Jason Schwartzman. And the animation's gotta be the best I have ever seen. It's incredible, unique, creative, and colorful for how they were able to depict the multiverse and make it feel like each world and character has its own unique style that's different from everything else. 
And the score by Daniel Pemberton is incredible. It's another one of the best Spider-Man movie scores ever consisted of being created. And I love a lot of these characters from, from Peter B. Parker, Miguel O'Hara, Jessica Drew. And what it does for these characters, I love. It takes everything I love out into the Spider-Verse and it brings that back. And in ways, from a technical standpoint, it's even better than Into the Spider-Verse. But the only reason why it's underneath it is because this movie really needs to be on the Spider-Verse. Where aside from Gwen's storyline, everything else has a very hard cliffhanger. It doesn't really have a resolution. So it feels like we only have half of a movie and that half the movie is still marvelous and an incredible achievement. And this now ranks as one of my favorite animated movies he's ever made. And it leaves me extremely excited to see what's next for Miles and Gwen and these characters moving into Beyond the Spider-Verse. Because this movie amped up my excitement for the final chapter in the Spider-Verse trilogy. And Across the Spider-Verse is an absolute knockout. In second place is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Miles Morales is a great Spider-Man. He is an awesome character, and I love that these movies made him more mainstream. And this movie is just a masterpiece all on its own. Not only is it one of my favorite animated movies ever made, it's one of the best Marvel and comic book movies ever created. It's directed very well. It's written very well. There's a whole lot of heart, even in the last movie, which I think does double down on the heart stuff more. But there's a lot of really emotional and powerful moments in this movie, like Leap of Faith with Miles and Peter. And so has Miles becoming spider-man it's such an inspiring tale for people and i love the villain of kingpin i love the other spider characters they brought into this movie like noir spider ham penny gwen peter b parker but this movie deep down is about miles and i love how he transforms and evolves over the course of this movie the characters here are compelling brilliantly paced marvelously written and directed and this movie has so many scenes that are some of the best ever put to screen for a Spider-Man movie. And this movie was just lightning in a bottle. And it's a complete story from beginning to end. And I absolutely love it. The soundtrack is also incredible and in Into the Spider-Verse. And I love that this movie had the impact that it does. It's an amazing movie, really worthy of all the hype it got. And considering how the Across the Spider-Verse played out, this movie aged even better, and so as Across the Spider-Verse being another amazing sequel to this movie that's just as good. So without a doubt, in second place is Into the Spider-Verse. But coming in at first place is Spider-Man 2. This is probably the Spider-Man movie I've watched the most, I have to imagine, but I absolutely love Spider-Man 2. It is one of my favorite movies ever made. It's my favorite Raimi movie. And this movie just has so much heart being about Peter struggling to balance his life as Peter Parker and as Spider-Man. Doc Ock is a wonderful antagonist played marvelously by Alfred Molina. He's got to be my favorite Spider-Man villain in the live action movies. And I love the score by Danny Elfman. It takes everything I love about the first Spider-Man movie from Sam Raimi and it makes it even better i love the characters here i love how this movie really focuses on peter and his willingness to continue to be spider-man or also just wanting a normal life that side of the movie is also extremely compelling and this movie is beautiful it has some of my favorite scenes in movies it always makes me tear up at points but it always makes me feel so much joy have this big sense of victory and this is one of the greatest comic book movies ever created it is cheesy very sincere about it. And I love Toby and Kirsten Dunst, the performances in this movie. And it's just got some incredible action sequences like Spidey and Doc Ock fighting on the train, which will forever be iconic. And for what this movie had, I just cannot praise it enough. Not only is this a masterpiece, but at the moment, this is my favorite Spider-Man movie ever made. I love it so much, and I continue to do so every time I revisit it. So without a doubt, in first place is Spider-Man 2. So yeah, 
That's my ranking of all 13 movies in the Spider-Man franchise. What's your ranking of the movies? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. And also give me your thoughts on Across the Spider-Verse. I'd love to know that. And your excitement level for Beyond the Spider-Verse, which I'm extremely excited for even more, considering my excitement for it was already so high. So let me know all of that fun stuff down below in the comments. And stay tuned for some upcoming videos I have planned very soon. And don't forget to follow me on social media. My username is down below at the bottom of the screen and in the description below. So please go do that while you're at it. And thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button and stay tuned for more pizza time